Today we are talking about kick pleat skirts. There are lots of different styles of skirts, but this one is by far the most common, so it's a perfect place for us to start. So our focus today is really on how to create your skirt panel, which is going to be face fabric, a liner, and then there's a stiffener in this to help it hang nicely. So once you have a skirt panel made, then you can decide if you want to put each panel on individually. Some people do that. I generally sew mine into a full loop and then either hand stitch it to the frame or attach it with cardboard strips. But there are lots of recipes out there for a skirt panel um, and you should definitely take this video and then go look at other videos and books and really experiment to find what works for you with different fabrics and different projects. But this is one recipe that has worked well for me to achieve just consistently professional results. So the first thing we really have to do is decide how tall we want our skirt. And I like a nice tall skirt on our ottoman. So we're going to get in here and we're going to aim for, let's say, 10 and a quarter. So give myself a nice accurate mark from the floor up. And carry that across. So that's where my welt cord is going to be. At 10 and a quarter. But in my skirt panel, I'm going to give one quarter inch of allowance down at the bottom. And that is, for lack of a better word, standard. So if you had carpet, you might want to give it a little more, like a half inch. Um, and some people like their skirts to, to literally kiss the floor. But if you're looking for a good rule of thumb, um, a quarter inch at the bottom is going to be just about right. So we'll make a 10 inch skirt on here. And then our width, looking at the frame from corner to corner, we're going to be right at 23. And because my ottoman is square, each side is going to be the same, but obviously if we're on a chair or rectangular ottoman, we'd want to get all those measurements um, first. But our skirt panels are going to be 10 inches tall and 23 inches wide. So once we know what our finished dimensions are, and I'm just going to call these our skirt panels. Once we know our finished dimensions, which we decided are 10 inches tall and 23 inches wide, and we need four of those, then we can start to make our cut list. And we have three components that we need to consider. Our fabric, our liner, and then our stiffener, which we're going to use Skirtex. So this can get a little messy, so we'll go through piece by piece on our worksheet. For our fabric for each piece, to the height, I want to add three inches, and that's going to give me enough to wrap around the bottom of the panel, have a seam allowance on top, plus some wiggle room just in case, um, just in case anything should go a little bit awry. It's easier to trim down and square off later than to come up a little bit short. So 13 inches tall on that, and to the ends, I am going to add nine inches, which gives me enough to turn the ends back. That gives us 32. On our liner, I don't have to add quite as much height because that's not going to come around the bottom of my panel. So there, I only need to add an inch and a half, but I will add the same to my width. And now for my skirt hex, I actually want that a little bit smaller than my finished skirt panel because I do want to fill that insert so that it lays nice and flat, but I don't want it to interfere with either my folds on the end or with my stitch line on top. So that we're going to take off three quarters of an inch. And on the width, we're going to take off a half inch. Now, in addition to all our side panels, we're also going to need quarter panels, which we're going to, or corner panels, which we're going to call gussets. On a sofa, you may also have these spacers across the front or in the back, um, but basically that's just to fill between our top panels. And on these, I'm going to use the same height as the rest of my skirt, and we'll just use a standard width of 10 inches on all of them, and I will need four. On here, I'll cut the fabric. I'm going to add the same allowances on the height. And on the side, just a half inch seam allowance. And on my liner, same allowance as my other skirt panels. And just a half inch seam allowance on my width. And over here, this one does not get any stiffener. Once we have dimensions for everything, it's time to start cutting. 
Make sure you're using a square or a grid to keep your rectangles true. Getting skirts to hang nicely is challenging enough without a crooked angle in the mix. With so many parts to keep track of, it's really important to label as you go. I like to label the top edge since my bottom edge is going to get sewn into a seam. I'm also notching centers as I go so that it's easy to line parts up when I'm ready to sew. Skirts can be quite time consuming, but they're a great chance to practice neat and efficient workroom habits. Getting pieces mixed up or flipped around is an aggravatingly slow way to work. For the liner portion of our skirt panel, most shops use muslin, so you may want to give that a try. Personally, I just don't have good luck with it. I prefer to use deck denim, which is a little heavier and seems to lay a little straighter. What's really important is that you find out which materials are most cooperative for you. Inside our skirt, we're using a product called Skirtex. This is just a stiffener to help our skirt lay flat. With some fabrics, you may prefer a lighter version called crinoline, or for a really relaxed skirt, you might skip the stiffener entirely. It just depends what you're working on or what your client's taste is. I like very crisp skirts, so I almost always use Skirtex. It comes in several widths, but I just stock the 11 inch and cut it down to whatever height I need. If you fold your panels to mark center, like me, be gentle. We don't want to create a crease. And be sure to press your stiffener panels to take out their curve from being on a roll. Let's start with our gusset panels. First, we'll sew our fabric and liner together along the bottom edge. This seam also gets top stitch, so it will lay very flat. Get in the habit of sewing continuously on projects like this. You'll be surprised how much time it ends up saving you. With liner and fabric sewn together, we'll fold our long piece in half and sew the sides closed. As you can see, our face fabric wraps around the bottom edge and comes up the back just a little so the seam isn't right at the bottom. Depending on the fabric, you may want to clip some bulk away from the corners before turning and pressing. The process for assembling our skirt panels is much the same, but we'll also be stitching a stiffener in with the bottom seam. In order to keep our layers from shifting, I'll be using a hand stapler to hold my centers and bottom edges together. It still takes practice to slide all three layers through the sewing machine, but stapling makes the job a lot easier. The seam will also get top stitched, but this time we'll top stitch to the face fabric so as not to bend our skirt tex. With top stitching, you really just want to go whichever direction your fabric is happiest. As with our gusset panels, I'll fold my assembled piece in half to sew the ends closed. This should put my stiffener right down at the bottom edge of the completed panel.
When I steam my skirt panels, I like to use a yardstick to make sure the bottom edge is completely straight. Sometimes it likes to pull up slightly in the middle. If our bottom edge is uneven now, we'll never get it to hang evenly later. My next step is to mark the skirt panel at 10 and a half inches. That's the 10 inches I want my panel to finish at, plus a half inch seam allowance to sew to my weld core. Here too, I'm going to staple my layers together so they don't shift while I'm moving and sewing them. I'll sew my panel closed right along the line I marked. Then, depending how I plan to attach it, I may trim the extra off now, or I might wait and do it later. Just remember that your stitch line is reference for a half inch seam allowance, not your cut edge. Finally, we'll press the ends back to our finished width of 23 inches. Have your ruler and square handy so you can make sure each panel is exact. If all my panels have been made properly, I should be able to sew them together with my weld cord and slide the entire loop onto my ottoman frame. In this case, I have plenty of wood to secure my skirt with staples and cardboard tacking strip and my fabric is hanging happily. But there are cases where there's nothing to staple to or the fabric just hangs better when it's hand sewn into place. You'll want to mix and match your options to suit each new situation. Lots of upholsterers prefer to attach their weld cord to the frame first and then staple each panel on individually. This gives you a little more forgiveness in the cutting and sewing because you can adjust at the bench to get your width just right. Explore until you discover what works best for you. That is everything that we are covering this time. Skirts take lots of practice and patience and they're definitely an art. So don't be afraid to take this recipe and modify it to suit your needs until you come up with your own perfect recipe in a variety of fabrics and on different projects. <music>